this and then um once you start talking i will turn off my camera so the focus is on you i'll turn on my camera if there's any questions um just so you awesome i'm all for yeah i'm all for q a like i don't want it to be just me talking at people i'm not that charming <laughs> and checking people are starting to log in and i'm just going to go ahead and read my little blurb and introduce you um and then throw it over to you so you could have the maximum amount of time um uh, i have i have something prepared and, and i'm going to be going down my three basics of sales but then uh but there's like there's a i mean all sales boils down to is three integral parts. That's all that it is. And then, you know, I'm gonna be elaborating on that. And then I'm more than open to questions because okay. sales is so nuanced. Right. There people are gonna, it's so specific to different types of, different types of industries and different types of business models. For all of the people that we had signed up, okay, now people are starting to come in. Okay, so I will get this started. Welcome everyone and thank you so much for joining us for this week's Small Business Essential webinar. Today's topic is Small Business Essentials, a fool foolproof plan to increase sales. My name is TJ Daniels and I'm the director of the Iowa Center's Women's Business Center. The Iowa Center's WBC is funded in part through a cooperative agreement with the um, US Small Business Administration. You will receive an email after this event from my colleague, Sierra Smith, thanking you for attending today's session, information on how to connect to our speaker, as well as a form to complete. Please do us a big favor and take some time to fill this form out. This information allows us to provide um, to continue providing free educational programming for small business owners in Iowa. Now go ahead and take some time to locate the chat function on your Zoom screens so you can join the conversation by asking questions or adding comments. Also feel free to introduce yourself and your business in the chat and include your website or social media page so we could visit and learn more about your business and network. Now a little bit information um, about today's speaker, um, Kevin Posey Jr., who is the Chief Sales Officer at Lumina, 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 Energy, Lumina. Lumina Energy. With over two decades of sales experience, Kevin Posey has left an in indelible In indelible indelible okay so um i should just let you introduce yourself but hold on wait let me finish this i swear i swear i'm gonna get it i'm gonna get it together y'all okay indelible mark on the field of sales and business from start um from his start to door-to-door -door sales in kirby vacuum cleaners to brokering sales with entire municipalities if you if it can be seen, he believes it can be sold. As long as I have product knowledge, confidence, and time, I could sell anything. And you know what? It is really funny because I have been telling people about your pitch mm. um, at the Black, Black and Brown Summit, and they're like, okay, so what what is what exactly is he selling and i'm like i don't know but i want to sign up i was like you know what? i was like honestly the technology is kind of above my head but mm -hmm. you sold it so well even mm -hmm. when you're answering the questions you know like if we're out of power in this city but we're in this i mean the way you answered it and the way you sold it i was like i, I really don't know uh how it all works but i would mm -hmm. absolutely sign up for that technology it was so funny but um maybe if we have time you could explain a little bit more so i could stop uh absolutely absolutely <laughs> all right so i'm handing it over to you the screen is now yours awesome hello everyone in attendance uh yeah we met i met uh the awesome madam daniels at the black and brown uh business summit and I want to get right back into it because I want to open up for questions. Sales is such a such a nuanced thing that is so specific to each particular industry and business that I want to be able to answer all questions that I can. So a quick old, uh, overview on sales. Once again, my name is Kevin Posey. I'm the Chief Sales Officer for Lumina Energy. And sales is best, uh, basically, if you understand these three points, sales is basically product knowledge, confidence, and understanding. Now, product knowledge slash honesty. I think that we as business owners are in love with our product. 
we, we have to know that our product is the best in the world in order to be able to open a business in the first place. But if you don't know every single thing about your product, every single thing about your service, every single thing about your good, then you're not doing anybody in any amount of service. You're not going to make a single sale. If I can tell you more about your product than, I, than you can tell me about your product, not to say that you can't learn everything, but if you don't, if I can't, if you don't know your product backwards and forwards, inside and out, can be able to recite it and talk about it in your sleep, then you're missing the mark. Uh, it's, it's, it's important to stay educated on the trends, evolutions, and seasons of your product service of good. And be honest with your product. Oftentimes, we, we, we are so enamored and happy with what it is, whatever it is, the business that we have, that we completely forget to be honest with our, uh, honest with our product and that know that we're not the one only good service, the only realty company, the only clothing company, the only branding service, consultative service in the world. We're not the only ones. We have to be honest with ourselves to know that we're not the only ones and also that there are some people that are doing it better. But there's something that no one can ever beat you on, and it's knowing your product backwards and forwards. So that's important to know it backwards and forwards, to be able to educate a customer on what it is that they need and how it is that you may be able to serve them. The second, uh, the second part is actually co is confidence. Confidence is such a major part of the uh, major part of sales and sales at all. It's uh, is more than just knowing your product and service, but also knowing the customer uh, the customer needs for that service that they cannot live without that service or product. Also, having confidence in your business also helps to with client management. Your sales cycle revolves around how you manage your sales, your sales, but also your client as well. Um, having the, um, let's see, uh, we all have a, we all have had that one client that believes that the world revolves around them. And I have to tell you that I both love and hate that client. We cater to them out of fear of losing them and then other responsibilities fall to the side. Your sales cycle is dependent upon your, um, the management of your current clients and the acquisitions of the new ones. So allow yourself the space to run and do your business. Don't let clients run you, you run your business. The way that I can be able to, to, uh, way, way I can be able to, to be able to help you with that is one assuming the sale, knowing that they will close. They live, they will live as long as you have a pre-established agreement, and that shows a timeline that they can seek comfort in. Okay, so understanding and managing your customer, having confidence that they're going to close, and having confidence in your product and how it is that you communicate it, you're going to be off. Uh, you're going to be, you're going to be top tier in no time. So understanding and having confidence and product knowledge in your uh, product knowledge in your in your good or service is going to uh, be able to raise your sales exponentially. Now this is the most important part. It's my favorite part because I believe that we as business owners and we as salespeople in general fail to uh, fail to remember this as the most important part of the sale. And that's understanding. Most of us, uh, and that's the most important part. Most of us, we as humans forget that we have two ears and only one mouth. So listening and understanding, and uh, listening, understanding your customer and remembering regardless of your experience, how great your product is, how great you are as a person. If you forget to listen and be slow to speak, you're forgetting the service that you're doing to your customer, regardless of whether you're selling clothing, real estate, technology, or anything of like uh, anything of that nature. I assume that you, uh, if let's say if you have a clothing company, uh, you have a you have a clothing company. Understanding your customer is going to be so important as far as acquisition is. Uh, acquisition uh, is is I'm sorry. As far as acquisition is uh, concerned, you want to always be getting new customers and then setting those customers up for continuing to come back customers, returning customers. So if you don't understand what the customer is going through, how they're being marketed to, how they're being treated, then you're going to miss the mark with that customer. Okay, so let's say if you have a clothing company, right, there are 10 billion different types of clothing companies out there, consultative service as far as clothing is concerned. There's so many people out there, but there's so many failing businesses as well if they don't understand the customer. They understand that they have, there's four seasons in clothing. You have, uh, well, in Chicago, we have two or three, but you have winter, summer, uh, winter, summer, fall, and spring. 
So then we want to have clothes for all those, uh, all four of those facets, but then also understanding that your customer is going to need something for every day and, um, and, and creating that buzz and understanding that you're wanting to be there for a customer for all of their clothing needs, not just because you have a great product, but because you want to be there for them in regards to everything that they have. Uh, in sales, and we, uh, we have to realize that there's an ebb and flow with our customers. So in speaking with our customer, not at them, but with them, it's super important that it's super important that we establish that good foundation of relationship of understanding and hearing them before we go to speak about what it is that they need to buy from our business. So um, there is three forms of uh, there's three forms of communication. There is peer communication, salesman communication, and over talking communication. So if we are peers, and I'm not trying to gain or get anything from you, it's an, e it's an equal ebb and flow between the two of us. How was your day? How was your mom? You're doing good, back and forth, right? But if you're a salesperson, you're asking them questions, listening to what it is that they're doing, uh, listening to what it is that they're saying, but then also asking them, uh, asking them yes questions that will get them to convert, to be able to get, uh, convert financially. For you, okay. Uh, the way that I can be the best way I can be able to be able to uh, illustrate that is if you're once again if you have a clothing company, and you're asking the customer, once, how are you doing? How's your day going? I make sure that they're good as a person. But then, how is your coat? Uh, how is your coat? How is that coat that I sold you holding up? It's doing good. Is it too hot for the season? Is it too cold for this season? Is it too cold? Uh, is I see that there's something a new trend that's coming up on Instagram for your particular age market or for your particular age bracket. Excuse me, for your particular age bracket. Have you thought about this? Asking questions as a salesperson is allowing them to speak for the majority of the time, but you're asking them questions that controls the narrative. You're making a room and a path for them to travel, to be able to reveal, uh, reveal information about themselves. That way they feel served and not sold at. Because a lot of times we, we get into business and we have this great idea and we have this great thing that we want to be able to sell. And then we just like, hey, here's this thing. Take it. Take this thing. Here. Here's this thing. This is great because I made it. Take it. This is this thing. Please take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. We're throwing a bunch of ad revenue, a bunch of money at marketing, Facebook ads, targeted ads, and things like that, because we believe that everybody should buy from us and not necessarily that one, that particular niche that will grow from there. Target uh, so understanding and listening to your customer as far as getting getting and gaining new customers and then your life's blood is going to be in retention so returning customers whether it's clothing real estate technology consultative services uh, wanting to service a particular industry like the medical industry or anything like that understanding your customer having a solid client and foundation base is the most important thing listening to what it is that they need before, uh, before you jump in with something for them to buy because your great product will speak for itself. You have a great business, you have a great product. You wouldn't be in business if it wasn't great itself. But if you don't address the need, it's like selling us, it's like selling a, um, uh, Selling a house to someone that just uh, selling a house to someone that just bought a house. We don't. We're not in need of another house, and that just means that they weren't listening. The customer, uh, the I'm sorry, the salesperson, the business was not listening. Understanding where your customer is, where they're going to be, and developing that constant back and forth in relationship with your customer is the best way, a foolproof way, to be able to develop and build sales. Cool. Hand this, um, uh, that's my short little snippet. I want to open up the questions. I'm going to hand this back over to the awesome Madam and TJ Daniels. Hello? I'm still here. I'm looking in chat to see if there's any questions. If sure. anybody has any questions, please feel free to include them in the chat. Uh, what are some particular industries that are that are that are in the that are here?
I find it tricky to sell my service because my cli uh, because clients need to do some inner work. What are some ideas? Uh, what are some ideas? I'm gonna have to dismiss this. Uh, what ideas do you have to help me convince them that the work that the work is worth it? Okay, so I find it tricky to sell uh, to sell my uh, sell my service because I need to do the inner work. Um, I think that's a little uh, that's dependent upon. Excuse me, that's dependent upon uh, Ms. Johnson. Thank you for your question first. Um, that's dependent upon what service industry that you're, uh, what is, what is, if I could ask, what is the service? Because uh, it, what is some inner work? Like if you're doing, if you're, if you're uh, well being for teachers, uh, well being for teachers, and then the teachers will have to do some inner work first before you can be able to consult them individually, yes? Okay, all right. So um, I think that's a golden opportunity to develop and also expand your services as well. So whatever well-being for teachers is, and whatever that's uh, consultative. Uh, this is a consultative service, right? So that means that you're in that gold. You're right in that beautiful pocket of being able to develop good relationship with customers and good relationship with teachers that which happens to be your customer. Um, the inner work that you're identifying for them to do, <laughs> I know me as a human and me as a husband, I have a hard time defining or trying to break down the things that I need to work on to be a better person so that I can be able to be served better. So sometimes walking through it with them, whatever inner, whatever inner work needs to be, able, uh, need, needs to be done, we'll be able to Build a uh, better fortify your customer base. So work uh, walking through it with them, not allowing you to say, "Hey, once you get this fixed, come and see me." No, walk with them through it, and that way you'll be able to convert a lot easier, and you have a lot more customers that are in love with you as the person, and then they'll pay for your product because they trust you because you were with them throughout the entire uh, throughout the entire journey. So well being for teachers, which is extremely needed and extremely necessary. Being there, for the, uh, being there through them while they're doing that inner work and checking in with them, checking in with your customer and your client is going to be very pivotal for you. So thank you. Thank you very much for your question. I hope that I answered it. Okay. Um, please keep the questions coming in the chat. Um, and of course, a lot of you know, if you've been on these webinars before, I also have my own small business um, and I do embroidery. Um, so embroidery is, it's costly, you know, mm. I mean, it's time intensive. It's, you know, it takes a lot of, um, supplies and honestly, even with me being by myself and doing it, I'm still cheaper than a lot of the other places, but it's still more than what people want to pay. Mm. So how do you sell a service, um, where people think that your service is just expensive? <laughs> uh, that's that's everything everybody everybody wants to pay free 99 for everything in the world <laughs> that's that's something that we all have to deal with um so uh, specifically with embroidery that's something that you're looking for a person yes so yes. whether it be a blanket or, or a doily or something or like normally that normally it's like a polo with a business logo on it or mm -hmm, a sh mm -hmm, shirt mm -hmm. with a design on it mm -hmm, um mm -hmm, or like you said a blanket or a bag or it could be anything that's awesome. That's awesome that you can be able to do that. I, I applaud you for doing I can draw a mean stick figure. That's it. I can do a mean stick figure, but that's it as far as my artistic talents. I can sing and dance, but that's about it. Well, and it honestly, it's an investment. You know, mm. I got a, a very expensive machine that, you know, mm. I've upgraded to. There's the materials, <laughs> there's the thread, there's bobbin, there's staple. So it's a lot that goes into it. And I think the customer doesn't always know uh, mm -hmm. Even if it's consulting and it's just you mm -hmm. and your brain, mm -hmm. you know, consultant, let's just say a thousand dollars an hour. Well, they don't mm -hmm. understand. I went to college for a zillion mm -hmm. years to learn mm -hmm. this or mm -hmm. years and years of sitting with people to know this knowledge that I'm trying to give to you. So, yeah, I'm going to charge a thousand dollars a day for mm -hmm. my consulting work. Um, mm -hmm. so, so it's just like how I mean. And so I do I, a lot of marketing on social media. So, yeah. you know, everybody's like, oh, my God, that's cool. That's amazing. And I could say, OK, this lasts longer than, you know, if you do vinyl on a shirt or this mm -hmm. or that. But even when you're saying like consulting work in your fee, 
and you're trying to get people to understand like i charge this because this is what i'm worth mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so if i could speak to that specifically one the customer does not care what you're worth they will never care what you're worth because that's not something that particularly hits their bottom line so uh so though i know for a fact that you're worth 10 millions of dollars yes it's 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 more so about the customer and what it is that they need right so when you say embroidery and then your consultative services customers like to nitpick and break down what it is that you like that you're doing oh you're only doing embroidery so i should be able to only pay this much for it instead of what you're actually what you're, what you're actually doing is branding what you're doing is branding and brand uh, and brand recognition and helping them with their brand. So if uh, so, because you're helping them with their brand, changing the perspective on it, you're uh, you're you're helping them to a you're listening to where they're coming from. Customer, I understand that this is like I understand this is embroidering, but this is what you're doing is investing into your brand as overall. So when you're when you're consulting with these people and when you're wanting to uh, let's say if you uh, I have I have this shirt and I want to be able to build a brand around my per my particular company, which is Lumina Energy. And part of me building that brand is embroidering, uh, embroidering a bunch of different things with my logo. My goal is to get my branding and to build my business. You are to be a part of that for that customer. So then it becomes much, much harder for them to fight against that because they uh, because that also uh, because you're investing in uh, with your consultative service, you're investing into the business, their marketing, their future, their branding, all of that. So the, just changing the word is, is super, super important of how they look at it. I was looking at it. Uh, so a friend of mine does real estate and there was a house that they wanted to sell and it was on the corner now the where the front door was facing uh, or the front door was facing that particular street appraised homes for let's just say you know, uh, appraised homes for a certain number but the street on the other side of the house appraised homes for more because it belonged to a different neighborhood do you see where I'm going with it? Yes. So all they had to do, all this real estate agent had to do was change the address from one side of the house to the other side. So technically it belonged to the other side of the neighborhood, therefore it costed more. So in listening to your customer, you're not just doing embroidering. I'm here to service you. This embroidering is going to gain and help you with your branding and your marketing moving forward. Therefore, it's worth the investments so that when you're uh, because from a branding standpoint, we are making the public see the greatness that your company has. Oh, my goodness. OK, Th that makes absolute sense, because normally when we're trying to sell a service or a product, we're trying to sell the service or product. Mm -hmm. We're not necessarily focused on the customer and their needs. We're just mm -hmm. trying to get our word out and our message out why you should buy our product. But and that's why I say be honest with yourself because there are 10 million embroiderers, there are 10 million salespeople, there are 10 million real estate or whatever it is, whatever it is that you're doing. They have wonderful products, but I'm going to find the best, as a consumer, I'm gonna find the best price for me because I have my own particular goal. But if a, but if a business were to listen to the customer as to why they're buying their custom their good product or service they will be able to more deeply understand and then develop that foundation of a returning customer of the service that you're giving not necessarily the good that you have listening is paramount is the most important part of any sales cycle whether acquisition or bringing uh bringing everything on and andre allen just commented the why and that uh why and that trusted relationship so those are very important things I'll listen and understand exactly so listen to understand so this is one thing i've definitely learned within my marriage i my wife would have a problem i would have a solution i thought that i was helping Instead of understanding that she had a problem, she wanted to hear me. She wanted to talk about why the problem existed. And I need to listen. I was doing my wife and my customer, and also I did this my business, and my customers disservice by not understanding 
where uh, not understanding what problem uh, what the problem was how the problem it can be uh solved and then how i can be able to walk you through it so that you can re uh, you can be a repeat customer Let's see where would the problem right but in regards to your wife sometimes she doesn't want to talk there's not necessarily always a problem just fyi from a mm -hmm. woman's from oh, yeah. i don't know if i'm from mars or venus but for from, from wherever i am i could just mm -hmm. tell you sometimes even with clients for real when clients are frustrated and just mm -hmm. speaking they're not mm -hmm. necessarily asking me to solve a problem mm -hmm. and as a coach mm -hmm. i'm not i don't always listen for just to hear. I'm always mm -hmm. listening so I could figure out a solution for you. But mm -hmm. sometimes they just want to vent and they just want to be like, one. TJ, thanks for listening. And I'm like, ooh, okay. Well, maybe do you still want all these resources I wrote out for you? <laughs> <laughs> no. But, but but that's what's important still. Like, okay, so let's say if you have a customer, um, let's let's uh, let's go back to the well-being for teachers, right? Mm -hmm. And you uh the you have Mrs. Clark who is having an issue uh, who is having an issue dealing with the problems that teachers truly have to deal with nowadays like almost wanting to be able to be weaponized themselves to make sure that they're to protect themselves and students that's a real thing that they have, teachers have to worry about regardless of where you are in the United States or in the world this is a real worry that teachers need to have to work, uh, worry about you're selling well-being to the customer and there's some inner work that has to be done, maybe some uh, maybe some mother or father issues, there are some uh, issues with rejection, there's some things that they're dealing with that they're taking into the workplace. If you work with them, if you are going with them on this journey, consulting them, one, from a revenue standpoint, your, your billable hours are important. So while talking to them, though you're not giving the, the prime and the principal product, you're able to be there for them and be there for them and be able to charge at a lesser rate what it is that you're doing in developing the relationship. It's another good or service that you're getting them there too. If I, I used to do solar sales for my company, and but there I ran into a lot of company, a lot of houses that didn't necessarily qualify for solar because they had weak and bad roofs. So then one uh, or or they had bad credit. So one thing I uh, one thing I added on to my company's services is to be there for them, uh, be there for them and guiding them to the place where I need them to be to be able to buy solar. So then I link them to someone who can be able to do. Uh, uh, someone who can be able to do low cost repair to their roofs. I got a referral fee from that, but I was, uh, I got a referral fee from that, but then also I didn't just give up on you because you couldn't buy right now. I developed the relationship so that when they were ready, that converted into a sale almost immediately because they were still in my cycle. They were still in my pipeline. And then they'll always come back back and mm -hmm. they probably would refer other people to you too because exactly. you're not just there necessarily for the sale you're mm -hmm. there to help them you there to okay okay if you have the mindset that money was always going to come if you're there for the person then they're going to be uh, if you're there as a servant to the person you're always going to come back always avail yourself as a servant granted servants come at cost right the customer has to understand that but being there constantly for the cut uh, constantly there for the customer and grooming them so that they can be able to be a part of your business acumen and your business service and so on is foolproof because they're not going to go everywhere you did all this for, you did all this for them and they're already paying us something to be to be a part of your sales time uh, pipeline and then they go and talk to somebody else no they're going to make the bigger goods the person that they developed a relationship with in the first place Okay, so I'll say it again, ask the questions in chat if you have any questions because I'll keep on going. I have actually probably like two or three more questions. Bring so on. please join in and ask the questions. We have a professional here, a subject matter expert. So um, we can ask, you know, keep on asking those questions. Hold on, wait, I do want my question to be answered first though. Um, okay, <laughs> yes ma'am, yes so, ma'am. hold on. <laughs> Okay, so you know I speak at a lot of events. I mean, yes. and honestly, I'm, I'm selling myself. I'm selling the Iowa Center. I'm selling the Women's Business Center. In essence, mm -hmm. this is a nonprofit, so a majority of of what we do is for free, regardless. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I've always have just been when I speak, I just speak about what we do and our services, 
And I feel like you say, I'm, I'm a humble servant. And that's how I've always um, put my message out there. Mm -hmm. In turn, I feel like I don't get the recognition in the mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. So not necessarily the clients, but mm -hmm. the community, because mm -hmm. I don't say, hey, we serve, you know, African-Americans. We, we serve Black people. We serve Hispanics. Mm -hmm. That is not the message I put out. I put out the message that we serve everyone mm -hmm. and that I'm going to help you do this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. But now, so without having that recognition, which of course in our industry, recognition means more money, more clients, more mm -hmm. this, more that, mm -hmm. more speaking engagements, all of that, right? Mm -hmm. So more recently, even still, I to the core, I, I'm a humble servant. I'm here to serve my clients. That This is what gives me energy every day. But I'm like, hold on, wait, let's look at my track record. Mm -hmm. I have mm -hmm. black and bold. I have mm -hmm. Lola's hot sauce. Mm -hmm. I have now these are clients that we started with from the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, Coco Creatives. We I, I, I let me name off some people. Mm -hmm. or, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um so should I brag or no? <laughs> like I I don't know. So because I'm I get frustrated that mm -hmm. you know i'm not getting the recognition that i feel like we should receive but mm -hmm. as a salesperson in mm -hmm. essence mm -hmm. i'm like I, I don't know how to put this message out there without sounding okay all right so because let's even say even with my embroidery mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i do some crazy designs yeah I, i'm but it's bananas like i'm yeah. good at what i do yeah. But even still, I guess I'm not a closer. I, I don't know. So, okay. So one, I want to be able to address from the community standpoint, mm -hmm. the community is always going to be out for itself in the beginning. Okay. So they see, the community sees what people are doing. And if you're not getting, you, if you, if you feel that you're not getting your just due, it's only because they're trying to compare it and put it in comparison to what it is that they may be, they may be doing to be able to over and undersell. I don't concern myself with what the community does. I don't concern myself with what the community does outside of advancements in my field. Okay. I know that though I'm a humble person, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm here to serve people. I know four things. My spaghetti is the best in the world, is better than your mom, is better than their mom, is better than Emily Johnson's mom, Andrea Allen's mom, and my <laughs> my spaghetti is the best in my spaghetti is the best in the world. I know that. I know that I am the best salesman that I've ever personally met in my life. I know that I'm a good husband and, and I'm trying to be better. And I know that I love God because I know those four things. Every conversation that I have carries those four things. So and uh, so, gotta have confidence in what you know when you speak. It's okay to speak about your business and what it is that you do. Understand that it's going to come with a decent amount of hate, and because people have it, you have to understand and almost expect the no and get around it. So when you go to these different events, and when you go to these different events, you do a bunch of different speaking events, understand that you are promoting yourself. And if there's no one to represent you, you represent you in all ways. So when, so like when we were at the better, uh, when we were at the, uh, the, the Black and Brown Business Summit, it was perfectly okay for you to say, we, our company does X, Y, and Z, and we've done it in an excellent manner. Uh, we've done it in an excellent manner and we've done uh, we have so many different convertibles with uh, with different companies, right? Am I lagging? I see myself yep. going slow. I'm yep. sorry. But you, you're. It's only the picture, not your words. So we're still hearing the words. <laughs> got it, got it, got it. Well, I'm ugly anyway, so just listen to my voice. So um, it is. So it is more than okay to be able to say my business does X, Y, and Z. This is what it is that uh, exactly like Emily Jensen just said, the data will speak for itself. And then in all in, uh, and, and then once because the data will always speak for itself, you don't need to brag. Mom always uh, my mom and dad always said, don't brag about yourself. Someone else will do it for you. So, be okay. so because of that, then because you know that within yourself. My product is excellent. I know my stuff. I know my, I'm a bad embroiderer. I'm a, I'm a bad person. I'm a bad man pajama. You better girl, tell somebody about me 100%. You know that within yourself. 
Because you know that, always look for, I might, the word that I always use are intersection points, where your business and where my business meets. So because you want to be able to say, oh, listen, the next, uh, the next speaking engagement or the next business opportunity that we have, hey, I think your product is interesting. Do you want to talk about intersection points, places where your business and my business can be able to connect? And because of that, you're giving credence, you're giving kudos to their business, and you're not speaking about yours because you wouldn't be in the room unless your business was great in the first place. And, and I know even before we started this, you told me, I, and I guess because I've always been so humble, um, it is hard to brag or it's hard to, you know, be in that place. But my work, honestly, it really does speak for itself. <laughs> and because your work will speak for itself, understanding intersection points, going to go, uh, going to speak to the people specifically about intersection points, when it comes down to, when it comes to down to that conversation at that meeting, you're going to speak about your company. I have embroidery, and then I also represent the I also represent the uh, the Iowa Business Center for uh, for women. Uh, please not, I, I hope I said it right. The, the Iowa Center Women's okay. Business Center, but yes. uh, the uh, the Iowa Center. I represent the Iowa Center, and I have great. Uh, I have and my business is doing great with embroidery. Forgive me. There's a lot of people. Forgive me. No, sorry. No problem. No problem. Okay. So. so. So yeah, make sure uh, the intersection point where you get to talk about your business and they get to talk about their business, you get to flush out where those things are, your business is going to go, okay, great. Because we intersect here, this is what it's going to take for it to get here, uh, for us to be able to work together where it benefits you, and this is where it's going to take where it's going to be able to benefit me at this cross section. Gotcha. Okay, so There was back a lot of questions. To Emily, she was the first one. Do you see yes. it as necessary to offer free and or low cost offers to help develop relationships early? Ooh, we get this one a lot. Um, yes and no. So I'm gonna be able to break that down in a couple different ways because okay, so one, I'm not about free anything. Ever. I'm I'm not about free anything. I'm I in so I'm not free about free anything. I want to be able to benefit from everything that I do. Okay, this is not going to be the last speaking event uh, engagement that I have with the Iowa Center and Madam Daniels. So it is okay to do low. It's it's a yes and no. So it all depends upon what your customer is because you have to be you have to be as a business owner very diligent about who and what it is that you speak about. Customers love to waste your time. They love to see. Let, let me window shop and see what you got going on here. Okay, mm, that's dope. Okay, let me see what someone else got. Like that, that, that sort of thing is, is super prevalent within between business and consumer. So those are, that's a very big thing. So just be very wary of who, to whom you offer these things with. That's one. Two, it's always good to, uh, so with you, you as a customer, Ms. Johnson, um, you as a business owner, Ms. Johnson, have the ability to control the narrative of how things go. So let's say if you have a teacher that is uh, that is wanting to that wants well-being services, but they don't know, quote unquote, what they're uh, what they're ready for or not. They don't know what they're financially ready for. So it's good to be able to okay, that's great. We can be able to sit down. And I can be able to consult you on the track, make a plan for them moving forward. If you listen to the customer, then they'll be more easily able to avail to you information as to why they believe that your service isn't financially ready right now. Okay, so uh, low, cost, uh, low cost offers is okay as long as you're developing the, as long as you're developing the right convertible for you. So let's say if you're, if you're, if there's a big event, there's a big, the Iowa Center is putting on the, a big, great event, right? And you have to pay, let's say, two hundred dollars to table there, and then because and because it's normally five hundred dollars, you pay two hundred dollars. But to be able to cut uh, cut your fee, to be able to, I'm a, I'm in building mode. So uh, so to be able to cut you cut your fee, to be able to offer to these people on behalf of the Iowa Center that's backing you, right? Offer low end service, but then also track them. Track them and create a life and a pipeline 
for them to go towards what it is that you truly want your customer to have because money is going to come it's how you get them there it's walking them through the process you understand so if you uh so if you are trying to say if you're trying to do i, I still don't understand uh well-being for teachers even though that sounds like it's so important like but let's say if, say if it was for my company right and i want that i want people to adopt my technology but they can't afford my technology just yet or they don't understand my technology just yet i can offer that consult uh that consultative or i can be able to speak to them about how the uh the there's a new message I'm sorry and, i just saw scroll and, and you know what emily if you're comfortable i could allow you to speak really quick to explain sure. exactly what you do that way we can understand and answer your questions more directly um so i just allowed you to speak if you're able to if not hello miss emily hello, hello. hi how are you great you i am hot i don't know if you noticed but it's <laughs> It's well, nice. thank goodness for the wind today, because I think that really helps. Yesterday was extra sticky. Oh, yeah. So, so as a, uh, I'm a, I'm a teacher well-being coach, and okay. I offer classes for teachers to take um, for their own personal benefit, but also um, for license renewal credit or graduate credit. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of my get them in the door with the credit piece, because a lot of times, you know, people are looking for quick fixes in mm. terms of, I just want to feel better about going to work and mm. coming home and having a life, you know? Um, mm. And so to get them in the door, I partnered with um, area education agencies to offer that, those credit pieces. Um, but really my focus is on that inner work that the teachers need to do for themselves to really kind of, um, turn introspective and make those lifestyle changes that will help them to be more successful. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's tricky. I'm finding it's tricky to uh, get clients in because one, they want a quick fix and it's not a quick fix um, mm -hmm. because they do have to do a lot of reflection and make changes in their lives, like habit changes. Um, so it's hard because you know, it's like you, when I listen to them, I hear I'm stressed, I'm overwhelmed. I have too much on my plate, mm -hmm. but then when it comes to actually taking steps toward fixing it, they may or may not want to take the time to do that because they're already overwhelmed. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of like this circle of, I don't know how to help them to see that the work is worth it. And so I don't know if it's offering free or low cost things in the beginning for them to kind of um, get that momentum going of, oh yeah, I do, this has worked, or I see I see how this, if I continue with this, this will make a difference. You know, and um, Kevin, let me just speak really quick. Yeah. One of the reasons why I don't, I, I don't even allow my clients to offer free stuff unless they're getting something in return. So, okay, maybe you want to do free croissants for your son's school, but at their next event, you better be getting a table for those free croissants mm -hmm. because people do not value free things. So mm -hmm. they may schedule an appointment with you and may not show up to it because it's free. Mm -hmm. Or they may schedule an appointment with you and do your hour for free, but they won't follow up and do the work that they have to do on their own because it's free and they just got all the information that they needed from you. Mm -hmm. So as a person that offers services um, that are very valuable and that actually take time and energy from the client, don't offer nothing for free. Now I'll let the professional answer. <laughs> but that's from TJ in her coaching standpoint of mm -hmm. offering free service. Okay, uh, Miss Emily, um, do you mind if I address this as someone, as though I were coming on board to sell? Sure. Okay. All right. So, a quick question: Where are you catching your potential customers and clients? Uh, not physically where, but where in their journey? Are they already teachers? 
Yes. Okay. And, all right. So from once again, and if I can, if I may be so, I'm pro I'm going to approach this as though I were asked to be brought if I was if I was asked to bro be brought on to be to do the sell to sell this. Yes. Okay. Yes, please. Um, I believe that catching them at teacher level is cool, but it is doing a disservice to your business. I believe that catching them when they're already teachers and they're going through something. Uh, when someone is going through something, they automatically develop their own survival techniques, methods, and things like that. So one reason why people seek counsel and pre, uh, counsel before they get married is so that they take that standard with them throughout their marriage to understand that therapy is super important throughout the tenure of what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So with t uh, so with teachers, from what from my understanding is that, or at least in Illinois, uh, teachers go through, they are student aides, not te they're teachers aides before they're even teachers. They have to complete a certain amount of credits and certain amount of teaching, uh, teaching hours before they even start. Mm -hmm. So reaching them at, I would say, reaching them at that point and letting them know, hey, listen, this is, you're, dealing, you're dealing with whatever age, somebody else's kids. Mm-hmm. You're dealing with you are you're dealing with that the stress of teaching the stress of whatever it is that's going on. You're going to need to be prepared for this journey. I would reach out to teachers' aides. Uh, I would start reaching out to teachers' aides first to get and then of course with that credit that's there oh that credit that's there yes getting them before they actually are accredited teachers that way they go into the um, they go into the job understanding that therapy and coaching are going to be constant aids and, uh, and constant things throughout the journey of their uh, journey of their teaching career and tenure. It's super important to be able to check in with yourself because you're pouring out to people so much mm -hmm. that you need to have something poured into you as well. Right. To, to, to be able to understand that you, it is okay to have your own life and still be concerned for your students, but then also be able to separate. And that's something that because we have our own traumas, we have our own pains, that we are going to have a hard time really getting our head around. Asking someone to have a self-reflective or, um, or to ask someone to figure out their own personal hurts and traumas while going through a service industry, which is a teaching job, is a little irresponsible because it, uh, because it, it, ha it okay, figure out yourself. I got something else. For, uh, when you get done with that, I got something for you that'll make your life better. Instead of going through it with them from the jump, from the very start, the genesis of their teaching career, before the pre-genesis, before they actually start, you're going, you're setting the standard that they are moving through their lot, uh, through their t teaching tenure, through their, through their, uh, through their job career. Mm -hmm. So catch them before their teachers, before they develop the bad habits, before they develop the, uh, the this table is rocking. Before, um, <laughs> before they develop the bad habits, before they develop their own survival techniques and their own survival mentalities, that's something that's super important. Catch them before they develop their own bad so habits. So set you up for success. Like, mm -hmm. do you see this as something that I could do, like along to have almost kind of like that pathway of an experience, so I could have different things targeting different people at whatever stage they're in. So for example, the, the pre-service teachers, like you're describing the student mm -hmm. teachers or student aides. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't want to leave those teachers who are like <laughs> oh, no, drowning. No, 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 no. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, 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 no. So I'm not saying abandon them. I'm saying, I'm not saying abandon them whatsoever. I'm saying that there's another question here that actually applies to this. Uh, yeah. So, uh, uh, so I'm not saying abandon them at all. I'm saying that to have a pathway and a track per, per, per customer, but then as a teacher's coach, as a well-being coach, you know this, you know certain landmarks and certain challenges they'll hit throughout their journey. So because you're hit, because you already know certain issues that they're already going to have, it's important that you address those issues and develop a pathway to be able to okay when you get here understand it's going to be rough 
there's going to be a troubled student that you're not going to be able to get off of your mind. And because of that, you're going to have to learn how to adapt and disconnect for your own personal safety so that you can be able to better serve that student and be able to go through it, addressing each teacher at each path. But you, this business sounds like it's a it's almost not a gold mine, but this sounds like a really, really good business because that means you're setting up a long, long-term customer. Teachers that have been teaching for 20 and 30 years need this service because they've seen hell and heaven on both sides, most times in both in the same day. Yeah. Great. Well, I, even right now, Emily, you have a great sales point with the great resignation of a lot of teachers Mm -hmm. here in the Des Moines area like it's yeah. all over the news right now mm -hmm. and of course they're saying that they're resigning because they can't take it no more they're stressed out mm -hmm. and this is and so one of course catching them before their teachers so one your customer acquisition catching them before their teachers understanding that you're setting up a pathway in the, in the uh, pathway for their for their journey and then also teachers that are already drowning as right, right now as well sometimes it like Sometimes reaching out to the teacher is not necessarily ne is not necessary. It's hard for someone. It's hard for you to tell me that I have a problem when I've already developed certain coping mechanisms. And if I just be, if I'm upset about it, if I cry about it, I'll be good and just go and deal with the problem later. Instead of understand instead of, instead of going to uh, possibly the principal or the counselors and say, hey, listen, your teachers are from a sales and business standpoint, your teachers are overworked overwhelmed and potentially leaving and going to and leaving your school system mm -hmm. there needs to be a way for them to be able to retreat or at least a way to, for them to be able to actually specifically deal with all the problems that they have and have like because their their constant teachers are constantly at war so not necessarily reaching out to the teacher but making it mandatory for the school system yes. to be there for the system uh, to be there for the teacher because as much as there's there's counts, there's uh, counseling services for this and social services for the students, there needs to be for the teachers and for the adults. Right. Yep. Wow, did I hit a gold mine to be able to talk to you too? Awesome. Uh, I so appreciate you unmuting me so I could share a little bit more about what I'm doing. And wow, I took tons of notes. So thank you so much. It was all Miss Daniels. Thank you, Emily. <laughs> Okay, so and we do need to get to this next question because I sure. actually get asked this question a lot. And it's how do you feel about sending emails to customers and how many is appropriate versus excessive? I want to inform and provide a service without being annoying. It is. <laughs> I need to tell you guys, and I pray that everybody hears me when I say this. It is okay and more than important for you to be annoying. That is an okay thing. That is, you're going to have to just deal, it's just annoying or uh, uh, as long as it's not harassment, but annoy, uh, uh, being annoying is something that like, it's so subjective. I call, listen, I was on the phone, I'm constantly on the phone with, with, uh, potential clients to be able to say, hey, did you get my email? Great. I understand. All right. You have a nice day. Oh, too much time? Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for bothering you. I caught you. I know it's, I know you're eating right now. I'm sorry. I just figured I'd get on the line with you real quick. I just want to make sure. Are you doing okay? Okay, cool. Great. Emails. Hey, are you, uh, hey, customer X, Y, and Z. It is okay to be annoying, not harass. So there's a difference between the two. So, Email us. Uh, so if you have a customer, so if you have a customer that you're trying to drum up more business with, to walk that line of being consistent is important. I can't tell you how many times I've gotten an email from. Let's see. Let's. I'm gonna go on my email real quickly. All right. So there's something. Uh, I don't know if people know uh, something called. Uh, have you guys heard of Robin Hood? Mm -hmm. Rob, uh, Robin Hood is that is that trade. I used to have the app a while ago. I don't have the app any longer. I have somebody that does that. I don't, I'm not I'm not that guy, right? But uh, be, uh, because they consistently send me an email two to three times a week, or 
for uh, or something in my promotions. It's in my spam. I ignore it, but I look at it every once in a while. I was like, you know what? I should look into this. It's okay to send emails. It's okay because that ultimately, how are people going to know who you are? It's okay to send, but once again, don't harass them. Not every day. Did you eat? Did you? Did you? Okay, great. Did you? Did you watch the news? No. Okay, cool. Hey, flip, hey, flip, let's do, hey, hey, let's let's look like that. That's too much. But sending a customer on a weekly basis, touching base with them, developing consistency with them, it is more than okay. And just remember. A federal law if they un unsubscribe or stop mm. the text or whatever mm. you you have to stop it um, yes but in, in my opinion mm. two or three times a week is not a problem i mean and then also it's important that you understand your customer as well so i'm going to go back to a point that i brought up when i was speaking when i was speaking at the beginning if you understand your customer then uh, if you understand your customer then that's not annoyance or uh, being excessive or harassing is not going to be a problem. Uh, my mother-in-law is a key is a key part of that. She needed a specific service, but she's not a technical person, and she lost touch of the person that she was uh, lost touch of the person that she needed this particular service from because they were reaching out to her the way that they felt was necessary instead of the way that she communicates. She's not an online person, but she'll definitely pick up a mailer. She'll definitely pick up something in from their mail. That's the way that she communicated. That's the way that she communicates as a person. So if the, so, if you're speaking to Ms. Johnson, right? You have a teacher that is an uh, is a newer millennial type of teacher. They're not going to pick up what's in their mail. Honestly, they'll probably feel it's disrespectful because it's to help the planet and all the wood and chopping the trees and paper that's being used. But they'll definitely pick up us. Uh, but they'll definitely look at a Facebook ad or a Facebook message. Hey. Have you thought to take a break really quickly, customer? Have you uh, have you thought have you th actually have you have you actually taken a break to to really assess where you are? Give me a call. We can talk about. Uh, give me a call. We can talk about what your problems uh, what your problems are from the week or from the past month. Your anxiety. Have you uh, have you have you done that? It's good to check in, but also know who your customer is and how your customer relates to it. To have a have, and this is your CRM, your customer relation relation, a customer relationship management. So, if if Jim Bob is eighty years old, he is not going to be on Instagram. So why are you wasting money on targeted ads on Instagram? If you're doing embroidery. And a lot of people and your and your target specifically is businesses that are trying to build their branding and their marketing. So why aren't you on? So should you be speaking to people on LinkedIn or this should be them or should this be a word of mouth thing? What is the niche of your customer? How do they specifically communicate with each other? And that's what's going to help. Perfect. Thank you so much. We have been talking so much that I did not realize that we're coming up to one o'clock and I always try to end on time. But of course, one of the questions that I always, always ask every subject matter expert that comes and talks, what is the one piece of information that you want the client to know today? It doesn't even have to be about this particular topic if you don't want it to be, but what is one piece of information you want um, our clients to know? Listen, listen if we're speaking about sales today listen if you're not listening you uh if you're not listening then you're not doing your your business any service or anybody else if you have to listen to your customer where they are how to speak to them and then how to follow up with them then you're never going to make a single dime and i can promise you that the foolproof way to make sales within your company is not a great product but listen to who why and how your customer lives their life Woo. I, I love it i i got a lot out of this um as well so thank you everyone for um for all the questions. Um, Kevin, thank you so much for taking your time out today to wow. share all of the information with our audience. Thank you to the audience for joining and engaging and asking those questions. Um, just to close, I wanna share some information about upcoming programs. 
Um, Tuesday, June 21st, um, our next SBE is Managing Business Cash Flow. And then July 11th, we start our eight class series called Financially Savvy, All Things Financials, Cash Flow Statements, Record Keeping, um, QuickBooks, all of that. Um, so if you would like any information, please visit our website, theiowacenter.org. And with that, I'll close with my one piece of advice that I give us all every single time, which is love what you do and do what you love. Um, thank you everyone for joining us today and have a great afternoon.